In the day's other news, U.S. businesses slowed their hiring in August amid global economic weakness and the tariff war with China. The Labor Department reports employers added a net of 130,000 jobs, fewer than expected. That total included 25,000 temporary workers hired for the 2020 U.S. Census. The unemployment rate held steady at 3.7 percent, even as more people started looking for work. The chairman of the Federal Reserve, Jerome Powell, is playing down the risk of recession. He spoke at a conference in Switzerland today and gave an upbeat view of what lies ahead, despite some uncertainty. Our main expectation is not at all that there'll be a recession. I did mention, though, that there are these risks, and we're monitoring them very carefully, and we're conducting policy in a way that will, will address them. But no, I wouldn't see the recession as the most likely outcome for the United States or for the world economy, for that matter. The Fed cut short-term interest rates in July and is widely expected to do so again this month. The Taliban staged another fatal assault in Afghanistan today amid growing questions about a potential peace deal. The attack killed two people in the western province of Farah, and fighting continued in the city hours later. Meanwhile, Afghan President Ashraf Ghani postponed a trip to Washington next week. His government says that a potential U.S. agreement with the Taliban could lead to all-out civil war. In Hong Kong, some 2,000 pro-democracy protesters surrounded a police station and subway stop in new confrontations with police. Officers answered with rubber bullets, tear gas, and pepper spray. And the demonstrators used umbrellas to shield themselves. They also rejected promises to kill a much-criticized extradition law. The government is one that doesn't listen to the voice of the people. It doesn't have a mandate from the people. All it listens to is the central people's government. This is an issue that, during the last two to three months, everyone has been able to see really clearly. Our government is not working for us. The protesters are now calling for an investigation of alleged police brutality and for direct elections of city leaders. The one-time strongman president of Zimbabwe, Robert Mugabe, has died. He led the African nation's black majority to power in 1980, and he ruled for 37 years before being driven from office. Robert Mugabe was 95 years old. Mexico now says the number of migrants arriving at its border to cross into the United States has fallen more than 50 percent in the last three months. The foreign minister announced today that some 64,000 people were stopped from crossing in August. That's down from more than 144,000 who crossed in May. Mexico deployed thousands of troops and police to slow the flow of migrants after President Trump threatened tariffs. Back in this country, the Trump administration opened a legal assault today on California and four automakers over emission standards. The U.S. Justice Department notified Ford, Honda, Volkswagen and BMW that they are being investigated for possible antitrust violations. In July, the companies adopted California's emission standards, which are tougher than those the administration favors. And on Wall Street, the Dow Jones Industrial Average gained 69 points to close at 26,797. The Nasdaq fell 13 points, and the S&P 500 added two. Still to come on the news hour, the psychological trauma of separating children from their families at the border. Mark Shields and David Brooks break down the week's news, including funding decisions for the border wall and Democrats' plans to address climate change. Inside the new wing of the Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts and much more.